Hello, hi there, welcome to a short series of videos looking at monopsony power. Monopsony power has become an increasingly important topic, uh, in particular in the labour market and also in the market for goods and services. And so we're going to consider in these videos some examples and then analyse the impact this can have on the economic welfare of, of consumers and other agents. So what is meant uh, by a firm having monopsony power in a market. This is a concept that has become increasingly important in recent years. So a monopsony is defined as a business that has buying or bargaining power in one or more markets. So therefore it's an example of market power. So this means a monopsonist can exploit, harness their bargaining power with a supplier, for example, to, to bring down the negotiated price at which they can get their inputs. And the reduced cost of buying those factors of production, in theory, allows them to make a higher profit margin. Now, monopsony power can happen in both product markets, the markets for goods and services, and also the labour market. Uh, but we have a separate video on monopsony in the labour market. We're going to be focusing on product markets in this short series. So some examples of uh, businesses that have monopsony power. We're going to be looking at some specific examples in a second, but the supermarkets, especially the big ones like Tesco and Sainsbury's, and increasingly the deep discounters such as Aldi and Lidl. Well, the supermarkets have significant buying power when they're sourcing food and drink and other products uh, for sale in the aisles. The National Health Service is a good example. Uh, they have significant buying power or monopsony power when they're purchasing raw materials, PPE, for example, or uh, vaccines or other materials and resources used in providing healthcare. The big electricity generating businesses, the power stations, have buying power when they're, when they're perhaps sourcing a contract for coal or gas or renewable energy. British Sugar is a great example, one of my, one of my favourite examples of monopsony. I think they buy the vast majority of the sugar beet output, the crop, in the UK every year. So they have clearly a huge buying power. And we've seen the rise, the significant growth, the astronomical growth of businesses such as Amazon. They have enormous buying power when they're sourcing their, their supplies. And generally food manufacturers, you imagine oftentimes on BBC they have a programme called Inside the Factory. You know, they're making millions of donuts or whatever it is, Bakewell tarts every day. Big food manufacturers will be buying enormous quantities of raw materials and that allows them to, uh, to achieve some monopsony power because, because of the sheer bulk of what they're buying. So here's a good example of monopsony power uh, facing increasing competitive pressure from businesses such as Aldi and Lidl. Tesco, Britain's biggest supermarket, uh, have tried to preempt this by putting increased pressure on suppliers to cut costs. Tesco demands supplier price cuts and discount battle. So Tesco may also be banking on the fact that the suppliers themselves are facing tough trading conditions during the pandemic and rather than risk not having retail customers they, they agree to these price cuts. So this is a good example of Tesco exploiting their monopsony position. Even though they have lots of cash and they can borrow at low interest rates they're still prepared to take the risk that, that, that some of their suppliers will look elsewhere. Now that example from Tesco, I'm not picking on this business by the way, but here's an, another monopsony story. Uh, it seems from this story that, uh, that uh, the deal that Aldi have with Haribo, the iconic German sweet manufacturer, is better than the one that Tesco has with, with Haribo. And as a result, Tesco uh, and their commitment to match Aldi on price, they want to renegotiate their deal. So here we go. Tesco is trying to exert monopsony power over the, the sweet manufacturer. Now look, these are two big businesses. So it's quite interesting the balance of negotiating the power in this decision. Whether or not Haribo feel the need to budge remains to be seen. And this story, another topical example of monopsony, um, comes from the digital economy and it highlights the market power of two of the world's digital giants, Google and Apple. Essentially, several of the world's leading publishers are pressing Google and Apple for a bigger share, a bigger percentage share of the revenues that their content generates online via the App Store, for example. Now, clearly, Google and Apple have considerable monopsony power in the market for content online. Uh, essentially, if 
every time you try to access the news on your smartphone, you're invariably accessing content via these platforms. So we can see monopsony power happening in both tangible markets for sweets and for farm goods and uh, what have you and milk, uh, as well as increasingly monopsony power being being utilised in um, digital products, digital goods and services. Now, in the second video, in the next video, we're going to go to the, our analysis uh, toolbox and think about what might happen if firms are able to exploit their monopsony power.